the last study that I want to talk about is a study that took people who were suffering in the way that we typically mean in the West, people who are depressed. And this study randomly assigned uh, adults who were moderately depressed, next slide, into either an eight-week MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction training, or to a waitlist control. And then after that eight weeks, next slide, they exposed them to a number of film clips that were carefully chosen to just rip your heart wide open, to make you cry, to make you sad, to make you think about things in your own life that uh, had happened. Uh, next slide. We're going to skip this. I'm not going to subject you to the, uh, you're lucky enough that we don't have enough time for me to show you the clips that broke those hearts wide open. OK. Um, so what you're going to see here, last brain imaging slide, is again the difference between, new, uh, between people who've been trained in meditation, and now this is just eight weeks. The previous studies, it was like thousands of hours of practice. This is after eight weeks of mindfulness training. You'll see the difference between those who trained and those who didn't. Next slide. OK, so what you'll see is that after the mindfulness training, there was greater activation, this is what you're seeing here, in regions of the brain that help control attention. That's that little blip at the top. And uh, this is the insula, that region of the brain I mentioned that allows you to feel your emotions as they are happening, the direct experience of emotions, not the stories. That became more activated among the people who were trained in meditation. And uh, what you'll see in the control group, greater activation, are all these regions we've been talking about that are part of the default network. Okay, so when people who aren't trained in meditation are exposed to sad stories, their own story machines, that machine of suffering, starts kicking in. Eight weeks of training, and instead, people are attending to their direct experience of emotions as they arise. Next slide. Uh, go ahead and, and next slide. <laughs> so this is the finding that I think is, is really intriguing, and that brings us back to the question of how do we end suffering. So the greater that the insula became activated while attending to things that make you sad, that is, the more practitioners were attending to the feelings of sadness, the more their depression decreased from before training to after training. And so we're seeing here a possible mechanism that mindfulness training allows us to actually open up to the experience of sadness, and that itself is therapeutic, and that you see reduced depression. Go ahead and next slide. OK, so I, I open by reminding us that we're here to end suffering. Next slide. And the next two lines of the daily recitation are not just that we're here to end suffering, but that if ending suffering is more important than anything, we will end suffering. If ending suffering is not more important than anything, we will not end suffering. And I think that is just as important a reminder as our intention. And so as we move forward today and tomorrow in conversations about how we are modernizing Buddhism and how we are giving away Buddhism through technology, I hope that we will keep this in mind, that just as when we are learning with our teacher, it is so important to know how easily it is to kind of have a near practice where we intend to end suffering and yet somehow just miss the mark a little bit in a way that perpetuates suffering. I think we should bring that same sort of um, insight and clarity to how we are giving away the practice and to always use that question of, is this actually helping to end suffering as our, our guiding thought? Thank you.